In my observation, politicians who, who become incapable of doing the basics start to do grand things. You know, we will eradicate hate. Well, my favourite one at the moment is they've moved on from poverty. Apparently they've solved that. <laughs> my favourite one now is, no, no, even better than climate, you get politicians saying that we're going to stop hate. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Trudeau in Canada is very big on this. He, the Canadian economy goes like this. Um, they're going to have the South Africanization of Canada. <laughs> and, and, and what does Justin Trudeau say? He says, I'm going to get rid of hate. I was in Canada the other day. I said, what's your prime minister going to do after he's got rid of hate? Will he do gluttony? <laughs> <laughs> will, will he solve envy? Maybe he could do lust. I say, he's the only politician I've ever seen who's split up with his wife to spend more time with himself. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but you know, it, it, it's preposterous. But you only start talking in those terms. We're going to eradicate hate. We're going to, we're going to solve the past. We're going to discover that people in the past didn't think exactly as we do in 2024, and we're going to scold them for it. <laughs> That's almost always, in my view, the sign of failing to provide education, yeah, basic, basic yeah. services, improvement to make sure that this generation growing up has a better life than their parents, not a worse one. I see it as being a smoke screen, or as it's sometimes called a woke screen. Douglas Murray's critique of political leaders, particularly Justin Trudeau, zeroes in on a troubling trend in modern politics, the promise of lofty goals as a means to distract from unmet basic obligations. Murray argues that politicians, faced with their inability to deliver fundamental services like quality education and public safety, pivot to grandiose ambitions such as eradicating poverty, solving climate change, and eliminating inequality. This tactic, according to Murray, serves as a smokescreen to obscure their failures in addressing the core responsibilities of governance. Taking Justin Trudeau's administration as a case study, Murray points out the irony in Trudeau's commitment to get rid of hate juxtaposed with the economic challenges Canada faces under his leadership. Trudeau, known for his progressive stance on issues like climate change and social justice, has indeed been a polarizing figure, with some of his policies and promises sparking debate about their feasibility and impact on the nation's economy. Canada, under Trudeau, has experienced significant economic challenges, including rising debt levels and concerns about economic growth. Critics argue that while addressing climate change and advocating for social justice are important, these should not detract from the immediate economic and practical concerns of Canadians. For instance, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business has raised alarms about the increasing tax burden on small businesses, suggesting that some of Trudeau's policies may hinder economic growth and prosperity. Murray's observations are supported by broader criticisms of political leadership globally. Figures like Thomas Sowell, an economist and social theorist have long criticized the tendency of politicians to pursue policies that sound good rather than those proven to be effective. Sowell points out that grand promises often end up costing more than anticipated, both financially and in terms of unintended social consequences, without necessarily solving the problems they aim to address. Similarly, Jordan Peterson, a fellow Canadian and critic of political correctness, has highlighted the dangers of prioritizing ideological goals over practical governance. Peterson argues that the focus on identity politics and social justice can sometimes lead to policies that are more symbolic, failing to address underlying issues like economic inequality and social cohesion.